vision. Welcome to the D list, the show where I list things and my name begins with a D. And if you can't trust someone whose name begins with D to list things, who can you trust? Today's list pertains to one of my all-time comedy heroes, Weird Al Yankovic. Of course, Al is the most famous and respected comedy musician on the planet, known for his original songs, his polka medleys, and of course, his song parodies. And while he is under no legal obligation to do so, Al famously requests permission for every song parody he releases on an album. But some musicians are less than thrilled about getting the Weird Al treatment, so sometimes Al has to scrap a funny song idea from appearing on an album. But that doesn't mean these ideas have to go to waste, as Al will occasionally perform these scrap songs in concert. And they live on today thanks to the magic of bootlegging. So here are just a few of my favorite Al songs that never made it onto any Al albums. First, an honorable mention, the Yoda chant. It's never made it onto an album, but it is on both of the concert DVDs, and new stuff is added to it every tour. It can't really be described, you just have to sit back and watch Al and the band doing this in perfect synchronization right in front of your face. Plus, these days they include Grim Grinning Ghosts as part of the chant, and you know, that gets my theme park nerd heart a going. Grim Grinning Ghosts come out to socialize. Number 11. Hey, you notice how none of Al's albums have any Beatles parodies on them? Sure, Hey Jude is in the first polka medley, but Al's never officially released a parody of the most famous band of all time. But that doesn't mean he's never tried to parody them. And the first instance was this unreleased parody of Taxman about the then biggest phenomenon in gaming. I used to be a pitfall free. That's where you find me every week. But now it's Pac-Man. It may not have had the immediate impact of Buckner and Garcia's musical ode to Pac-Man, but this might still be one of the earliest parody songs about a video game, if not the earliest. And when you think of how many video game related parody songs exist today, this song might as well be a musical historical landmark. While it never got an official release on a Weird Al album, this song was included on one of Dr. Demento's basement tapes, so it did get something of a home release, but not on an Al album, so it still counts for this list, damn it. Number 10. Much like Money for Nothing slash Beverly Hillbillies asterisk, this song is more of a mashup which takes music and lyrics that aren't supposed to go together and yet somehow go together really well. In this case, Al sets the titular Dr. Seuss book to U2's Numb. And in a pretty rare occurrence, in this case, the music wasn't the legal issue preventing this song from album inclusion. No, U2 approved of the parody, but the Seuss estate was less accommodating. They're fine with Mike Myers as a demon clown cat, but this, no, nope, this is crossing the line. Still, Al managed to get some mileage out of the song, performing it in both the Bad Hair Tours medley and the 1996 Al Music Special. I am... Okay, that's enough. Well, doggies. Hey, 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 Number nine. Most of Al's parodies aren't really about the song or artist being parodied, so the ones that are tend to be memorable. Smells like Nirvana, Achy Breaky Song, Performed This Way, they all took a musician's song and used it to joke about the musicians themselves. And this is the one that started it all. Now, there are differing reports about whether Billy Joel rejected this song because he was offended, or if Al never even bothered trying to include it on an album because he figured Billy Joel would be offended, but either way, Billy Joel eventually let him parody Piano Man, so if he was offended, he got over it. Good on you, Billy Joel. Ta 
Number 8. Al parodies the eagle's desperado as a passionate plea to a particularly smug piece of fruit. I just love how desperately Al seems to want this avocado to get off its high horse and be the food it was always meant to be. This song later did get something of an official release when Al performed it on his Nerdist web series Face to Face, with Hard and Firm on backup. Somebody eat you, you better let somebody eat you before it's too late. Number seven. Hey, another Beatles parody, sort of. The story of Free as a Bird is a long and interesting one, but the story of this parody is simple self deprecating nerd humor. <laughs> This song may never have gotten an official release, but Al later perfected the premise with White and Nerdy, which became his biggest hit and is a song that the world is better for having, so everything works out in the end. Number 6. Al sings a jingle for a pizza delivery place, which just happens to sound like Celine Dion's infamous song from Titanic. Yeah, it's another food song from Al, but the brilliance comes from the juxtaposition of the Pizza Place's promotional copy and the bombastic James Hornerness of it all. Al really sings his heart out on this one. His heart that may or may not go on. I'm not sorry. Crazy a girl me at the low. Wonder wonder see. Wonder one get it any more set a gene cool. Number five. I've spoken on this show before about how funny a really, really short song can be. Just a few seconds is all you need for a one-note joke. But this parody of Take the L, which Al performed in some of his early concert-only medleys, is a less than one-note joke. The joke is how little joke there is. It's practically a deconstruction of the misconception that all you need to write a song parody is a title that kind of sounds like another title. No, some premises just don't sustain past the title. And this one is just too stupid not to love. Number four. In a very rare occurrence, here's a song where Al wrote the music and another artist wrote the lyrics. Sort of. Occasionally in concert, Al will play a clip from his 1999 Al TV fake interview with Michael Stipe, where Al and Michael collaborate on a song together. Just say the first profound thing that pops into your head. Just throw out some lyrics, anything. We all have cell phones, so come on, let's get real. Where did that come from? That's brilliant! Okay, let's see. Hmm. We all have cell phones, so come on, let's get real. And then to kick off the encore, Al will give that song the passionate performance it deserves. We all have cell phones, so come on, let's get real. We all have cell phones, so come on, let's get real. Oh yeah, preach it, baby. Cell phones. Let's get Number three. 
The fictional meta premise behind this next song is that Al likes to write unsolicited theme songs for TV shows, and he tried writing one for Home Improvement. And in his own words... I submitted it to the producers, and, uh, and they liked it, but they, uh... Oh, what was the excuse that they gave? Oh, they said it sounded too much like some other TV show theme. The Rembrandts approved this parody, but Warner Brothers rejected it because they were concerned about the original song becoming overexposed. Because nothing about Friends was ever overexposed, right? Once again, the basic premise for this song was later revisited on an official album release. Handy on mandatory fun. But in this case, I like the older concert only version just a little bit better because, frankly, the song being parodied is a lot catchier. Number two. For this song, Al returns to a favorite subject of his, classic TV, and specifically Gilligan's Island. There's some ladies on the island who live in the front room area and red hair ginger. Now, supposedly, T Pain did give Al permission to parody I'm in Love with a Stripper, but the song still wasn't included on an album, possibly because Al eventually decided that the joke just didn't sustain a full song. It's just as well, because I think half the humor in this one comes from the reveal, which would have had a lessened impact if you read the song title on the album cover before. And the concert medley version ended up being the perfect length. And my number one favorite unreleased Weird Al song. When we were young, Bernie's daily was down the block. One of Al's best known concert only parodies, Paul McCartney infamously rejected this parody of Live and Let Die because he couldn't condone a song about eating meat. Hey, Al's a vegetarian too, but he still parodied Lady Gaga, so come on. And for a song that's never been released on an album, this song has had quite the impact. It was a clue on my favorite NPR game show. Weird Al Yankovic did a parody of Live and Let Die, but he named it after a common comfort food. What is it? I'm trying to think of a comfort food that rhymes with I. Mm. That would and, help. Mm -hmm. Good strategy. <laughs> and yeah, that's I'm a just good coming one. up blank. Chicken pot pie. Uh, chicken, chicken pot pie. <laughs> <laughs> and then during the horn section, blah, 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 what happens? <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Everyone has to get that YouTube going. It was even referenced in the second to last episode of my favorite CBS sitcom. So, the last good episode of my favorite CBS sitcom. I vow to finally stop petitioning. Paul McCartney to let Weird Al record Chicken Pot Pie to the tune of Live and Let Die. <laughs> it's over. I'll let it go. Yes, it's a silly food song, but it's a silly food song with a rubber chicken, so double the fun. <laughs> And there you have it, my favorite Weird Al songs from concerts and other non-official releases. So, have you seen Weird Al in concert? How many times? Which tours did you see him on? What did you think of the changes to the traditional set list in the most recent tour? Let's discuss this all in the comments, shall we? And until next time, this is Dave, signing off.